Hey guys, so right there I was just messing around playing over some 2-5-1 progressions. And so 2-5-1s, a lot of you guys already know, those are like the backbone of jazz chord progressions and jazz harmony in general. Pretty much any standard is going to have 2-5-1 progressions. A lot of times standards will even have 2-5-1s that take you into other keys. So 2-5-1s happen more than any other common chord progression and it's really important to be practicing all the time because of that and to be able to really nail it in a lot of different ways. We're gonna talk uh, later on in just a second about being able to play not only diatonically on this sort of thing, but being able to use approach notes, bebop rhythms, uh, substitutions on two five ones, and uh, just modern phrases in general using things like pentatonics, triadic soloing, all of that stuff. But to start, What's, what's the first way that you want to tackle any chord progression? How are you gonna get a chord progression down? I always say that there are really just a few steps. One, you wanna be able to play with the arpeggios of any chord progression, and, and ideally you wanna be able to mix up the arpeggio shape. So uh, this is something that, that is in my PDF for tune learning exercises on 20 standard chord progressions that pretty much walks you through, to me, really the only four steps that you ever, ever have to do. That's uh, arpeggios, uh, playing diatonically, um, adding two note approaches, and adding three note approaches. So you can check out my video and PDF on that if you want to get more into the steps of learning any chord progression. But what this video is going to be about is actual language, actual phrases, and analyzing those phrases to help you take your line construction to the next level. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to get into that second step, which is just being able to solo on a chord progression diatonically, and we're gonna do that over two five ones. So a lot of times people think, oh, two five one, whatever, it's all just the same scale. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, uh, the chord scales that can go with those chords, um, you can just play C major all the way through, just changing the root appropriately depending on what chord you're on. So a lot of people feel like, oh, you can just push the buttons and it will work. But if you try to do that, you may find that it doesn't feel good. It just sounds like you're doing just that. You're just pushing buttons. So how do you control that? How do you really sound good with diatonic phrases? You need to focus on your voice leading. You need to make sure, which voice leading is just a smooth transition um, from chord to chord or measure to measure, and usually using, using stepwise motion or stepping around the notes and landing on chord tones. So that's one thing that I've done with the first set of phrases, the first phrases in this PDF uh, that I just made, 50 major 251 phrases. Um, the first uh, step with this is just soloing diatonically. And so again, what you need to do is focus on the voice leading. So let's analyze the first phrase from this uh, PDF. All right, so again, the first category here is gonna be diatonic voice leading. And we're gonna go through a few different categories. Uh, the second category uh, later on will be approach notes. Um, and that's something that I talk about all the time as being uh, the harmonic concept that's like the heart and soul of bebop and post-bop then uh, that's gonna be using like chromatic approach notes and closures. Then the next category is going to be bebop. So what changes there is we're gonna get even hipper with our rhythms. We're gonna add more syncopation and the rhythm, uh, rhythmic complexity of the lines is gonna get uh, a lot more difficult and challenging. Um, but again, you know, you'll have all this stuff and recordings of me playing everything as well uh, to practice along to. Category four is going to be uh, 251 substitutions. Um, so that's gonna get super hip. We're gonna go through a bunch of different options uh, for 251 substitutions. And then category uh, five of the PDF is going to be ultra modern 
phrases. So that's going to use a, a variety of concepts, things like pentatonic shifting, triadic soloing, and, and all sorts of stuff like that, and melodic cells. So that's going to get into a, a super modern territory. Um, all right, but anyway, so checking out this first phrase here. Um, the lick, it sounds like this. <laughs> All right, so notice it, it sounds uh, really nice, even though it's not using any sort of chromaticism. It's all just notes in this scale. But here's why it works. We're not just pushing buttons. We start on the root. Cool, that's logical. One, two, three, five shape. That's really common. And then we wrap around the minor third. So with the chord. That sounds nice. Then we're going to dip down to the fifth. And we're going to kind of delay the resolution. We're going to create the sus effect by landing on the four. We're going to delay the re resolution going into the third. And then we're just going to arpeggiate up three, five, seven, nine. And we're going to land nicely on the fifth. Then we're going to go around in the third. And that's just kind of a nice diatonic trail off to the phrase. Um, so notice what's happening. We're always either landing, starting on, on a chord tone, or the content is just sort of delaying getting into that chord tone. So that's exactly what we do in this phrase. It's never random. Every note has, has a purpose. It's going into a nice uh, chord tone typically, and that's what makes it sound so nice. All right, so now let's fast forward into category two. So that's gonna be the approach note category. Um, so here with this one, it's gonna sound like this. All right, so we start with just the arpeggio going down. Cool, that's all diatonic, nice stuff. Now we're gonna add an approach note. Okay, interesting. So we're actually hitting the major third on a D minor seven, speaking in my key. Ba -ba -de 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 -a. That note doesn't sound good, but it has a purpose. It's wrapping chromatically around the seven going into the next bar. And then we dip down into the nine. Play a nice little chromatic note in there. And then from the 13, which is a nice sounding note. That takes us chromatically down into the root. Chromatic enclosure around the third. Three, five, seven. Little chromatic motion going down into the root. And then the six. So the six is a really melodic note. It's a nice melodic note to end a phrase on. Cool, so there's our approach note phrase. Now, moving on, we're going to check out one of the bebop phrases. So let's see, for the bebop phrase, let's check out the, uh, the third one in the PDF here. So that's gonna sound like this. So what we're seeing here is we're just seeing a lot more of the the uh, rhythmic embellishment. It's really similar to the approach note phrases, but we've just got more 16th notes happening. I'll play one more from this that, that's gonna give you the vibe. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'll get into a harder one. Here's, here's phrase six. It's gonna be in double time. One, two, three, oh. Cool, so we've got a lot of rhythmic variation there, double time triplets, all sorts of stuff. That's what really gives it the true bebop character when you get into that uh, rhythmically advanced stuff. So then moving on, we're gonna go into substitutions. Let's just do a, a basic one here. We're gonna do the uh, fourth one down, which is actually going to be what we call a backdoor two fives. And so what we're gonna have here is instead of outlining the D minor seven in this fourth bar, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna outline F minor seven. That's gonna seem a little random at first, but I'll explain it when we finish. So the, the chord, just to get in, the, in your ear, the chords. We're gonna disregard that. It's gonna sound like this. You 
Here, I'll even play it with the play along here, just so you can hear how it sounds. So as you can hear, it's a bit of a rub. Um, so what we're doing is instead of going harmonically, we're using what we call a backdoor 2-5. It's a really nice sound, nice dark sound. And it's called the backdoor dominant because it sounds like you're coming from the other direction. Instead of coming from above the chord, 2-5, 1, you're coming from below. So we're just outlining that super clearly. We start on the root of this sub, essentially. Uh, we do this really typical shape. That's a really common shape. And then we, we get into the nine of the root, or uh, the nine of the, uh, the five chord of the sub. So thinking B flat seven, not uh, G seven. And then of course the trick is we always have to resolve. So we're resolving using a, a, an enclosure there. And we do that same enclosure shape just to stick with theme. And we end it just like that. Let's finish up now by checking out uh, an ultra modern phrase. We'll go to a pentatonic shifting one. We'll go down to uh, number four. Um, and we've got 10 phrases in each of these categories. We'll do number four of the ultra modern. So this one is gonna sound like this. All right, cool. So what happens here is we start with just D minor pentatonic, that's logical. Uh, but then when we get to the G7, so we transition by just going up a half step from the G, our last note of the first bar, into an A flat in the second bar. And then what we end up doing is we do A flat minor pentatonic. So that's gonna create a lot of tension on the five chord. Again. Against that chord. Then we're gonna keep on doing pentatonics. We're gonna resolve for a second. We're using C major pentatonic, cool, so that's gonna sound resolved for a second, but. Uh, but then we go to F sharp minor pentatonic. C sharp minor pentatonic for a second. And then we resolve. So the way that I shifted there was that I used from the first bar to the second bar, I just pivoted up a half step. I use that same thing in the second bar going into the third bar where we resolve for a second from that B to C. I again, just go up a half step. Then I use common tones in, in the next part. So with a C major, I go. And then I land on a B because B works in the key of C major. But then using that common tone, I transition into F sharp minor because B is shared with F sharp minor and C major. Then on that F sharp, I pivot once again using a common tone. Um, F sharp sh is shared uh, in F sharp minor and C sharp minor, so. And then I resolve from there. So let's hear this one with the play along. All right, so a really cool sound there, as you can see, using the pentatonic shifting. So, um, and we've got a bunch of different co concepts in that last category, the ultra modern category, where we, we use melodic cells and triadic soloing and, and all sorts of stuff. So make sure to check out the PDF for all the phrases. And we've even got analysis in the PDF. We've got some light analysis there, so, um, so you'll understand how everything works. And uh, it should be a really valuable resource uh, for the most important chord progression to practice in all of jazz and should really make your line construction a lot stronger. Happy shedding guys, always stay in the shed and uh, I'll see you next time for the next one. Thanks a lot for watching, see ya.